In this one, we're gonna be talking about the Django query set. So a query set is allows us to grab data that's in our database using models. And it makes it very simple and easy for us to do. Most of the time when you do a query set, it becomes out of list. So you can iterate through it with a for loop. And we'll show you how this all works in just a second. Um, and then we'll also show you how to put it actually in the, temp uh, the um, templates itself as context variables. So um, there's all sorts of things that you can do here, such as um, changing the order of them, filtering down the query set, excluding certain types of things. Um, we can also annotate things. There's a lot of stuff that you can do here, so it's, it definitely is a very powerful topic to, to discuss, but we're only gonna be showing you the basics. If you wanna learn more about these query sets, definitely, definitely recommend that you check out our project called um, Serve Up a Membership. So on joincfe.com slash projects serve up membership, this will go into a lot more of the custom query sets stuff and also just under, the deeper understanding of how query sets work. So I definitely highly, highly recommend that you check this out um, to see a more about those query sets. But without further ado, let's actually get started in trying to use them. Um, okay, so the first thing that you wanna do when you want to use query sets is you have to import the model that you're gonna to want to query. So from dot models import and ours is sign up. So that's our sign up model. So in models, sign up is the name of it. So to get a query set, by default, what we can do here is I can print out everything in this query set. So we're gonna be going off of the assumption that they are authenticated and they are a staff member. Um, so the query set to do it in general, we could just print it out and you can use parentheses in there or just print if you're on Python 2 or 3, you can use parentheses, and this is how you can print it out. If you're on Python 2, you don't have to use the parentheses. Um, so let's actually print out the signup.objects.all. So what this is doing is it's going to the model itself. It's getting all of the model objects, and then it's going to get all of them. It's not filtering any of them, so it's just getting all of them. So let's go ahead and print it out on that home page. And assume that we have to log in with our staff members. So if I refresh in here, um, and we look at the terminal. I can't tell if I'm actually the staff member at this point. So what I'll do is go back into home and we had that query set showing up only if they're staff. So that's this right here. So we'll say if query set. So if query set, then we'll say welcome staff, h2 welcome staff, and then we'll show the query set and then do the end if here. So this end if is closing off that query set if. So I'm gonna tab that in where it's not doing the authenticated one. So we see here we're not the logged in the admin user. So let's or the stat or a staff user of any kind. So I log in as a staff user and now it says welcome staff and it's showing that query set. Uh, what also would happen here, so if I refresh I can look in my terminal and it prints out all of these signups. That's what's happening. So it's actually showing if we look back in our view this is showing all of those signups. So what if we wanna see individual signups? Well, what you see here is actually a list of individual objects. So each one of these are objects, right? So each one, each one is its own instance of the signup model. So to see this in another way, if we comment this out and do a for loop, so for item or object or instance in signup, Dot objects dot all. This is now iterating through each one. We can print the instance. So we're printing the instance as an individual. Um, so let's go ahead and run that one. So I do a refresh in here and I see in my terminal, I should see each one. Okay, cool. So now it's coming through as each email that's actually signed up. Now we could double check this, of course, if we go into the admin itself and I'm already logged in so I can just go into the admin and I can go to signups and I can see all the signups here, 38 signups. So we have probably 38. We could count it out or we could actually iterate a little bit better and just say I equals the one and then we'll print, print I and then at the very end we'll do I plus equals to one. So that's some basic uh, iteration stuff. So if we go back into the home page, we refresh in here and we see at the very end, we should see 38, and sure enough, we see 38. Cool, so that means that we can actually go through and see all of these signup objects. Now there's stuff that we can do even more than this. So each instance, we can 
grab certain parts of that instance. So in the model itself, we can grab the full name, we can grab the timestamp. So let's actually try that. We'll grab print instance dot full name. So this is using dot notation to get the field it is. So going back in here, we refresh again. And again, it's printing whatever. If there are full names, it will print it out. Otherwise, it's printing out nothing. Um, so this is cool. So this is useful for using it in the terminal and being able to see stuff in the terminal. But what if we want to see it in our template itself? So this is how this context is going to work. So instead of actually iterating it through here, which I'll comment out so you can see how we iterated before, I'll now say query set is equal to signup.objects.all. And instead of having this weird list for the query set, we're just going to copy this and paste that there. So it changes it. And now that same query set is a context variable. Um, so we can use these context variables much like we do inside of Python. Inside of our template, we can iterate through these template variables. So if we say for instance in query set, you could also replace this with object or just an, any variable you'd want. You're setting a variable here, uh, but I'm going to call it instance in query set. This is our for loop, so we do in for at the end of it. Um, we have to, in the template tags, we have to declare when it starts and when it ends. Unlike our Python function, we actually don't need to declare when it ends because the spacing makes that for us. So now for instance in query set, I can just do instance here. So instance as the context variable. And we want to make sure it's the same as the one that's being looped through. All right, so now if I refresh, notice that the, all those brackets go away and it shows all, all of these different um, actual items here, which is cool. So that means that I can do all types of stuff here. But I can also let's put a comma and say dot full name. And let's add a line break at the end of this so it actually breaks each line. And we'll go back in here and refresh. And now it's showing all of the same data. And again, it's only showing it to the staff people. So if I log out and I show ABC again, it doesn't show any of that data. It's not even loading that data. Where the other one, it is loading it and showing all of this data. So this is, some, this is a very easy way to actually go through and query everything here. Now, of course, you could add it into a table. So let's, let's just really quickly put it into a table uh, so it looks a little bit nicer. And I'll just do table class equals to table. And this is from Bootstrap. The class of table is from Bootstrap. And then inside the for loop, this is where we'd want to put our table row. So table row and then table column. And I'm just going to make it one, a one column table. And, and there we go. So now we've got our table. If I refresh in here, we've got these nice lines and showing everything. So of course, if we wanted to make it to a different with two columns, so we separate all the details out a little bit, we can do that just like that, refresh, and now it's showing the name and the email. And we could even use our timestamp, right? So we could copy, let's go ahead and copy this last one. And we could put the timestamp here. And we see this timestamp, there we go. And we can use a filter here called time sense. So using that, that straight up and down slash and use time sense and we refresh, it shows us when this stuff happened. Notice it's in reverse order. Right, so let's change the order because four days. This is the the most the oldest one is first, where we might want to see the newest one first. So let's go back into our view and in our objects here, we're going to change it and say ordering order by excuse me, and then do negative timestamp. So we're reversing the timestamp and we refresh in here, and now the top one is coming through as. Uh, the most recent one that happened was three days ago. Uh, so if we go into our homepage, or actually if we log out and then go into our homepage and say Justin and then say abc at gmail.edu, we signed up. Cool, that looks good. And then we go in here, one, two, three. And now we just see the one that just happened, right? So we can add a go to that time since part. Cool. Um, so there's a lot more stuff that you can do with this with context variables. We can also, uh, or excuse me, query sets. We can also filter down. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to filter, um, let's say we wanted to filter full name is Justin. So we could also do filter and we would do full name 
and we can say I contains equals to Justin. So that's a type of filter. Oh, we want to do two underscores here. And there we go. So now it filters it down for us. So this is just this is the field name and then two underscores and then it contains Justin. Um, or you could say I exact. And then it will only have the ones that are just in. And you could do this with all sorts of things. You can do filters for time periods. You can do it for all sorts of different ways on how you can actually filter down this data. Uh, and we can also get the count of what this data would be. So if I said um, this exactly, I'm just going to go ahead and print out what the count would be. So I could print out that and then do dot count. And that will actually show out the count for me. So I refresh in there in the terminal and it gives me this number of six. And there are, of course, six here showing up. Cool. So that's how we would do that. And then in home.html, we can add a for loop counter to do something very similar. Inside of here, we just add a new column with TD. And we can just do for loop dot counter and refresh in here. And now it's showing the counter for that's related to this for loop. All right, so um, of course, inside of these for loops, you can do all sorts of other kind of if or conditional statements. So if um, the for loop If the instance um, dot email, so this would be instance dot email. Right now, it's coming through as Unicode, but instance dot email is equal to abc at gmail dot edu. We could show something different, right? So, um, to, an example of that would be within the for loop. Let's add a new table and a new column, and we'll only add this if it's the same email. So, we'll say if instance dot email is equal to that email. We'll say is equal. We could come back in here, refresh. Notice they all say is equal because, um, well, they are all the same instance. So let's go back into our view. And I'm going to change the query set back to what it was. Just get rid of this filter here. Comment it out at the end of it so you can still see it later. And now it'll come through and use that conditional of is equal. Uh, and some of them will be good, some of them won't. All right, so that's it for some basics in query sets. I do recommend that you check out how you can use them in the query set API reference. Um, there's also database query guides on how you can use uh, different types of querying the, of the database. This does get a lot more advanced, and that's why we have all the content we do have on joincfe.com. So if you have any questions on query sets, definitely take a look at all the documentation, do some Googling, um, and of course, you can feel free to ask us questions as well. Uh, but at this point, we are going to leave query sets here. Um, and yeah, so if you want to give us some suggestions on learning more about query sets in particular, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.